Welcome, movie buffs. Today's episode is so exciting that even Stanley Kubrick would come back from the dead just to watch it. Or should I say, hello to the eight people who will actually watch this video in its entirety. We're talking sequels to popular franchises, epic fantasy that will make you forget about reality, inventive horror that will make you scream so loud your neighbors will think you're being attacked. And if that's not enough to get you excited, let me remind you that most of these movies hasn't even hit streaming yet. It's like finding a unicorn in your backyard, rare and magical, and I've got a lot more interesting videos for you. So feel free to subscribe so you too can learn what movies are popular according to an imperfect system that likely favors recognizable franchises over creative indies. So sit back, relax, and grab your popcorn. This is going to be a wild ride. Evil Dead Rise. Because nothing says fun weekend like a demonic invasion of your apartment building, it is the latest installment in the iconic horror franchise. The movie follows two sisters and their children who accidentally unleash a horde of flesh-eating demons after discovering an ancient book cleverly titled How to Summon Demons for Dummies. Director Lee Cronin has managed to inject new life into the franchise by taking the action from the woods to the city. It's like taking a fish out of water, but instead of a fish, it's a bunch of demons. And instead of water, it's the city. You get the picture. It also explores the tired themes of motherhood and family, as the sisters attempt to shield their screaming children from the very demons they summoned. It is touching, but let's be real, we're all here for the gore, and boy does Evil Dead Rise deliver on that front. Practical effects, they're so good you'll swear you're actually covered in blood and guts. Yes, the plot is predictable, but that's like complaining about getting a free pizza. Sure, you know what you're getting, but it's still delicious. And while the film may lack humor, it's not like you'll be laughing. Evil Dead Rise is like a roller coaster ride through a haunted house. It's terrifying, but also exhilarating. If you're a fan of horror movies, this is like Christmas, Halloween, and your birthday all rolled into one. Ghosted is a romantic action comedy film that tells the story of a farmer Cole and Sadie, a CIA agent, who fall in love while on a secret mission to prevent a bioweapon from being mishandled. Because who needs Tinder when you can have a high-stakes mission with a side of romance? But let's be real folks, this movie isn't reinventing the wheel. You've seen it all before, but it's still a good time. It follows the well-trodden path of lovers bumbling into danger and becoming targets with some plot twist you could see coming a mile away. Chris Evans and Ana de Armas have have natural, sparky chemistry and enough charm to power a small city, and the engaging plot mixes comedy, adventure, and espionage. These two could make a trip to Walmart seem like a romantic getaway. Overall, Ghosted is a fun and entertaining movie that doesn't take itself too seriously. So grab some popcorn, turn off your brain, and enjoy the ride. The Super Mario Brothers movie is like a giant bowl of spaghetti. It's colorful, fun, and a little bit messy. It's like the video game franchise came to life and threw a party, and we're all invited. Whether you're a die-hard fan of the video game franchise, or just a casual viewer, you'll find something to love in this delightful animated film. The plot follows the adventures of two brothers, Mario and Luigi, who are transported to the Mushroom Kingdom, where they must rescue Princess Peach from the evil King Bowser. Directors bring a level of humor and heart to the story that's almost as impressive as Mario's jumping skills. And speaking of impressive, the animation is like a work of art. It's so detailed that you'll feel like you're actually in the Mushroom Kingdom. Sure, there's some excessive fan service, but it's like a pizza with extra cheese. Some people just can't get enough. It's like a love letter to every Mario fan out there. And there are exciting action scenes, touching moments, and an unexpected cameo at the end. Overall, the Super Mario Bros. movie is one of the biggest premieres of the year, and for good reason. It's a must-see for fans of the franchise and fans of animation alike. So, sit back and enjoy the ride. If you thought the Joker was disturbing, just wait until you see Joaquin Phoenix in Bo is Afraid. Who needs a good night's sleep when you can have a mental breakdown instead? Joaquin Phoenix delivers a powerful performance as Bo, a man on a journey that tests his sanity and will to live. The cinematography is stunning and the score is haunting, creating an eerie atmosphere that will stay with you long after the movie ends. While the plot can be confusing at times, it's a puzzle that's worth working through to uncover the shocking twists. The only real downside to the movie is its excessive length and lack of humor. But if you're a horror lover or a fan of Ari Aster's previous works, you'll appreciate the challenges that Bo is Afraid presents. It is a must-see for anyone who loves horror movies or just wants to have a mental breakdown in the comfort of their own home. Just make sure to bring some extra therapy sessions. The movie challenges you to confront your deepest fears and darkest secrets. Scream 6 is a thrilling sequel for a famous slasher franchise. 
it's the perfect movie for anyone who loves suspense, gore, and the occasional jump scare. The film follows the few lucky survivors of the Ghostface murders as they leave Woodsboro and start a new life in New York City. It's like New York has not enough problems without a killer on the loose, but the past comes stabbing back when a new killer appears with even more dedication targeting them and their friends. This is a sequel that respects the original films and adds new twists and surprises. The strong cast receives raves, especially the outstanding performance of Courtney Cox as Gail Weathers. The on-screen chemistry between Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega is effective enough for a horror movie. However, avoiding predictability proves more difficult than outrunning a masked killer. There are also plot holes as wide as the target demographic for slasher sequels. Nothing critical, but particularly picky viewers will notice them. All in all, Scream 6 is a fun and exciting slasher that doesn't forget the previous films and adds new characters and storylines. John Wick 4 is like a symphony of violence directed by Chad Stahelski and starring the one and only Keanu Reeves. I mean, this guy could probably take down an entire army of assassins with a toothpick if he wanted to. The film offers all the adrenaline-pumping action that fans of the series have come to expect, along with some new twists and turns. Reeves is in top form, taking on hordes of bad guys with the grace and precision of a ballet dancer, only with more guns and explosions the story as deep as a kiddie pool. While it has nothing groundbreaking, it's still entertaining to see John Wick taking on the high table and gain his freedom, which is about as original as a sequel to a sequel to a sequel can get. The film also introduces some new characters and factions, including a new group of assassins and cult-like organization with a penchant for theatrics. And of course, we get to see some familiar faces from previous films, including Ian McShane and Lawrence Fishburne. Overall, John Wick 4 is a must-see for anyone who loves action movies and wants to see Keanu Reeves at his badass best. It is a satisfying continuation of the franchise, delivering on all the promises of the trailers and then some. If you're looking for a war drama that will tug at your heartstrings, Guy Ritchie's The Covenant is a movie you might want to watch. The movie revolves around two soldiers who are fighting to stay alive after being ambushed in Afghanistan. One of the film's strengths is its portrayal of the emotional impact of war on not just the soldiers, but also their families and allies. It pays tribute to the bravery and sacrifices of Afghan interpreters who risked their lives to assist the military. Gyllenhaal and Salem are a dynamic duo. Their performances are so powerful that you'll forget they're even acting. They are like two sides of the same coin, showing the physical and emotional toll of war in different ways. Some viewers and critics may find the movie too sentimental, but let's be honest, war is pretty sentimental. It's a never-ending cycle of sacrifice and loss, and the film does a good job of capturing that. While The Covenant may not be Richie's typical fare, it's a breath of fresh air, a reminder that he can handle serious subject matter just as well as he can handle slick heist movies. Get ready to be emotionally wrecked because Guardians of the Galaxy Vol 3 takes you on a wild ride through space and your feelings. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you'll probably need a box of tissues by the end. The best MCU trilogy and the best closing part as already called in reviews. James Gunn delivers a finale that is epic, it's satisfying, and it leaves you wanting more even though you know it's the end. The film relies heavily on nostalgia, but let's be real, who doesn't love a good throwback? It explores themes of family friendship and redemption, with heartwarming moments and unexpected twists. Its greatest strength lies in the performances of its incredible cast who bring these heartwarming characters to life in a way that'll have you rolling on the floor crying. And as if that wasn't enough, we finally uncover Rocket's tragic backstory. It's heart-wrenching, it's touching, and it's the kind of story that sticks with you long after the credits roll. While the movie may not be as fun as the other films in the trilogy, it's like a fine wine. It gets better with age. And as a thunderous farewell gift from James Gunn, it's like a fireworks show. It's explosive, it's dazzling, and it's a perfect way to say goodbye to these beloved characters. Roll for initiative, because Dungeons & Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, the fantasy adventure movie based on the popular role-playing game, is here. This is a perfect escape from reality, taking you to a world filled with magic, adventure, and some seriously shady characters. The film follows a band of likable rogues and scoundrels as they embark on an epic quest to steal a magical relic that can raise the past away. The film delivers laughs with its witty dialogue, hilarious genre trope references, and joyous embrace of utter fantasy absurdity. It explores themes of camaraderie, trust, and honor in heartwarming moments that'll have even the toughest half-orc fighting back a tear. Dragons, elves, orcs, and other fantasy creatures abound to satisfy by the hardest of D&D fans. Some critics and viewers found the story simplistic and cliched. The cast of characters is large, and not all are fully developed. The movie also relies too heavily on deus ex machina plot devices and nods to D&D fandom, but as a dedicated disciple of the universe, I loved it all. The strongest element of the film is its cast 
who clearly had a blast with their roles and infused the movie with heart and humor. They form a likable party of adventurers you'll cheer for to the very end. The special effects are breathtaking and will make you want to immediately roll up a new character sheet. I'm really disappointed that the movie didn't get more attention and make more money at the box office to get an immediate sequel and was sent to streaming early, which feels like a nat one. Are you in the mood for an exorcism gone wrong? Then Nefarious is the horror flick for you. The film follows a psychiatrist who discovers too late that the serial killer patient claiming demonic possession may actually be telling the truth. The movie aims to blur the line between sanity and madness. It satisfies fans of demonic gore and supernatural creatures, but nothing really extraordinary. Some critics found the film too predictable, relies too heavily on jump scares, gore, and cheap effects. The editing suffers too. Despite its flaws, Nefarious has a redeeming quality. The acting. Flannery's portrayal of a killer possessed by a demon, barely containing the chaos within. The director ratchets up every fiber of dread to create a tense, suspenseful atmosphere. If you enjoy horror movies about demons that make you question your own sanity, then Nefarious will tickle your dark side. It may not be a work of art, but as a cheap thrill ride of terrifying proportions, it delivers the goods. I give it 3 Possessed Nuns out of 5. Well that's a wrap folks, this review is so good it deserves an Oscar for Best Movie Review. There's a new star in town! If you haven't already shared this video with your friends, what are you waiting for? It's like a secret treasure that you don't want to keep to yourself. Sharing is caring, people. And let's talk about that subscribe button for a second, go ahead, click that button and be the first to know about all the latest and greatest movie news. And with that, we bid you adieu. Until next time movie lovers, keep calm and watch on.